Welcome to the Dragon Ship 2024, the year of fear. Let's go. And for all you guys that love the metal openers, brand new one, a word to the wise, PDP. I guess not. Let me get this set straight. Here we go. Here on the rise, can't get anywhere without the wolf coming in. What are we gonna do? Welcome to the Dragon Ship. I'm scared. How about you? Masculinity is in crisis. What are we to do? We need to acquire a dominant masculine presence. Now available on Amazon, masculinity is in crisis. Men's masculine behaviors and traits have been suppressed by popular culture. Why has it become so popular to shame, guilt, insult, masculinity, and masculine behaviors? After 50 to 70 years of this has resulted in a very large subset of men who have become weak, useless, and crisis pathetic state for boys and men that leads to depression and violent despair. 
A dominant masculine presence addresses this very dilemma for the individual man and it firmly establishes why this is what is desperately needed by the individual man today. In this book, clearly defined masculine traits and behaviors and the emotional durability provided by traditional masculinity are presented as a guide to what every man should embed into his identity. Putting these principles and behaviors into practice will motivate and direct your path step to step to create for yourself an authentic dominant masculine presence. Skull, you guys, it is the Dragon Ship. We've got everybody on board today, almost everybody. 2024, the year of fear. Okay, can 2024 be your year? Hell, it's going to be my year. Or will you get sucked up into the year of fear? Can it be the year of opportunities? How about the year after? If you're brave enough to seize them by the balls, you can. So let's stay positive and create an optimistic wave of emotion despite this global sea of fear that occurs and ramps up every single four years. It's an amazing thing. It's nonstop. We're going to talk about a little bit about the media and how involved they get. It seems to always be about the money. So let's get right to it with my panel today. We got some special guys here right now. Nuclear Claudio. We've got AJ, the detailing Viking. We have bless odin viking dad has graced us from the pages of x we appreciate that and of course everybody's favorite wise uncle wraith dean tour and we've got paul Barrer's mirror universe self in mike Steele. welcome guys how are you doing today on the dragon ship good fantastic Mm. Living the dream Thor. excellent the dream. yes live in the dream because we know the secret to live in the dream don't we Absolutely. Not being in fear. So, guys, it's come to my attention after over 61 years of life that with regular frequency, there is a bombardment of scary shit that gets thrown in our faces and in our ears. Scary, scary shit. And then our peers say, oh, have you heard this? The world's coming to an end. Hell, I can remember when everybody thought the world was coming to the end because the clocks were going to go from 1999 to 2000. Holy shit. There was going to be all kinds of panic in the streets. Hospitals wouldn't work. Street lights would stop working. We'd beat each other's throats. Heck, cats and dogs were going to live together peacefully. I, I still have one of those stickers that says, please turn your computer off on New Year's Eve. <laughs> and then, of course, a few years later, we had... December 12th, 2012, the Maya, end of the Mayan calendar. Holy crap. It went 10 times more serious at that point. Oh, before that, man, you had that. SARS. They made a movie about it. Oh, yeah, we had mm-hmm. SARS right after that. Yeah, we had, <laughs> like, they made SARS, like, 2003, 2004 was SARS? Something like that. And that and in between times, we had all these wars that were all saber-rattling, death, destruction, you know, uh, and then World War Three with Trump at the beginning of 2020. Everyone exactly, forgot about that. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and then economic collapse. Oh, wait, yeah. Dot com Man. bubble. And then the last five years, women bad, men bad. If you're a man, hate woman. If you're a woman, hate man. It's just My population it's, decline. <laughs> yeah, nobody's having babies. You can't get married. You can't live together. No, men are all the same. Women are all the same. Uh, let's have a bunch of, uh, of media and then the rise of social media in which, guys, the logarithm is all about this conflict. Huge amount of conflict. And because and trad, trad thoughts and cakes. It's all that matters. Yes. And think of it this way. If you can be controversial or you can be salacious or you can preach the latest conspiracies and prove them to be true, which they are, um, then you can get eyeballs on target, which sells advertising. Heck, I will say this for a fact. And if I get banned, I get banned. YouTube promotes beef amongst the influencers that are on YouTube. Why do they do that? Anybody got a guess? Ad revenue. (laughs) <laughs> of course it's ad revenue and uh, they even do some sneaky shit like you'll have that vanity metric of subs 
which mine is super low, so it doesn't really matter. But I know plenty of folks all the way up to a very, very large podcast. My dear friend Myron gets this all the time. I, and speaking of which, I had a great time with him this last Monday on his podcast on Fresh Fit. But they will lose thousands of subscribers overnight. Thousands and thousands of subscribers. And then, you know, they'll come on and it, them and others will complain a little bit about it. And then, boom, the controversies back up. Uh, views go back up. It's a pretty amazing thing. And then uh, it they want their influencers to talk and complain. They absolutely do. It's a pretty amazing thing. And if you could do it on shorts where the attention span's really low, even better. It sells more. Oh, yes. So let's talk about some of this fear that's going around in the media and why it seems like it's so regular and why it seems like it's damn near year round now. My experience really started in the uh, late 70s with my very first presidential election, which was Ronald Reagan. Hell, Iran had taken hostages and they made us think that any of us could be taken as hostages. Everywhere in America, we could be taken hostages. There was only one savior, one savior. And it wasn't Jimmy Carter because he cost us a lot in the gas crisis, a lot, a lot. And the world is coming to the end if we don't have this man from California seize the reins of power in Washington. That was my first experience with watching this radio, TV, and we didn't even have the Internet back then. But I noticed it. But I'll tell you what. After that was all done and said, it kind of died down. Now, could he have done some good things? Could he have got the hostages free? Sure. But really didn't pay too much attention after that because there were some economic ups and downs and we just went about and lived our lives. And then some four years later, the same shit started happening again. Now, fast forward some 40 years, the shit seems like it's going on 24 seven with the advent of social media and the alternative media and cable news. It's pretty strange. Oh, and you know what? Before we get too far out acting, I will shout out uh, Lero Gonza. Coach Red Pill, apparently one of the early influencers in this space when it came to intersectional dynamics, has uh, passed away in a Ukrainian prison. And he was speaking out politically in Ukraine. And he was calling for the end of the world because of all the things he had discovered between Russia, Ukraine, and the United States. And it looks like they don't know yet, but possibly he may have had an accident in prison. He was 55 years old, so RIP, my friend. All right, guys. So I want to go to my good friend, Wraith Dean Tour, right up front. And and as Wraith, um, Wraith, have you... Um, let's see. We're going to go full screen with Wraith. How do we do that? Like this. Okay. All right. So have you... Um, seen this in your lifetime too you're a couple years older than me so you've had quite a bit of experience there um and what's your thoughts on this i mean this does seem like they're ramping up the fear pretty regular for i think it's been a constant thing ever since the after world war ii i mean you had the cold uh -huh. war and you know how many times did we hop under take under our desk at school practicing for the nuclear attacks right uh, you know, and I think the best way to control society is to keep it in fear. And I think that's what, that's what uh, you know, from a government standpoint and from a uh, new standpoint, that's what they've been doing. Yeah, that and, even works with employees, too. It didn't, I think Edward Bernays wrote about that in Propaganda. Uh, I believe the Austrian painter wrote about that. And so did Karl Marx about keeping a population uh, frightened and afraid and very, very afraid, either from external sources or internal sources. Right. If you go back to the book, you know, George Orwell wrote 1984, the whole basis of keeping society in control of society was to keep them in fear. <clears throat> Therefore, they had these constantly made up wars mm -hmm. between, between the different continents as the society was broken up into continents. And uh, there was nobody dying. There was nobody the wars were all fake. They were just news propaganda. And um, they constantly think, changed the language in that book, too. Uh, didn't the right. lead character Winston work for a, a uh, government entity called Newspeak? 
which was in charge of educating the population. They changed the definitions constantly to keep people confused. Right. And to keep people from understanding that, um, you know, words have power. And if you use a word in one way, it means one thing. And by changing uh, the way the word's viewed, or the understanding of the word, you change the meaning. And by changing the meaning, you change the mental image that a person creates when they think of that word. So, yeah, I mean, we've witnessed that just in the last few years, Wraith. Um, look at what they've done just since, I mean, we did an episode a while back on this since uh, 20, uh, 2012 and then 2016 with the, the term male vulnerability. And look at where we're at today. If it that actually worked in the format that it was changed across the nation and academia, uh, males becoming emotionally vulnerable in order to improve right. relationships, wouldn't we have fantastic relationships with women today? And we would see a rise in the birth rate. And we've seen exactly the opposite occur. Right. So, yeah, we so, definitely did. But, but, but like I said, the, the whole mechanism is designed to keep us in a constant state of relying on the government, relying on others. I don't even want to say the government, others. Whether it be, you know, other institutions or, um, you know, subverting our own needs and our own desires to the will of others. And whether that be our in relationships and partnerships or anything. And right. it's, when I, when I talk about, you know, when I, and we've done episodes on thirst and stuff, when we talk about that, that's that's a mechanism to keep somebody constantly wanting something, and that and that something is affirmation, affirmation that they're a good person, affirmation that they're successful, and those kind of things. Okay. And if they keep us always needing that, then you know, and they do that through fear. They keep us always needing that, and they always have. To yeah, that's for sure. Without a doubt. Let me shout out some guys in the chat that have joined up. David Colt, man, that's crazy. I love your comment. I'm going to put it up. Check this out, Wraith. This is pretty amazing. A year to change my life. Every year should change your life, son. This is some good stuff, man. And then I, I got to put this up too. Omega Hashira, the year I take back control. I like it, but I'm going to change it for you right now. Today is the day you take back control. Today, right now. So you certainly can. And then uh, <laughs> I love some of this stuff that with these guys. Now, this one came from Facebook, so I don't know who it is. But uh, I don't know who this is, but it says Wraith is. Oh, I can't put it up. It came from Facebook. Let's see. Uh, Wraith is real life Uncle Iroh. Okay. Fantastic! Somebody really. I, I I typed that one in in our uh, in our chat. Um, oh, okay, okay. If you David guys are familiar Colt. with Avatar: The Last Airbender, Uncle Iro, Wraith is that man in real life. He is. He can a mod is. verify that pearl, please? <laughs> oh, do we hey, got. Hey, I, I saw her on Bumble. I swiped on her. She was in Dallas the other day. She's on Bumble. I saw That's I saw a pearl on Bumble the other day, and I swiped right on her. So if that is the real pearl, hit me up. Uh I'll say this: A lot of guys don't like the the the, the task that Pearl talk. I have nothing against her. Um, I spent time, several times, talking with her over the course of a week or two, and in person. Um, I think what she really wants is she would like to have a husband and a family. I think that is her true ultimate drive, and that actually drove her into the space. And I think she would probably agree with that. Um, so good. I hope she finds what she's looking for, and I wish her plenty of success. Her success will will uh, aid us all, I'm sure. I have no beef with her because I think most of the beef is instigated. And she's even talked with me about some beef she instigated just to get the views because, you know, it doesn't take long to be an influencer to realize that that actually makes you money. Um, I just prefer not that. I don't make a living at this. But I totally understand those that do want to choose violence will make more money in this arena. David Colt, fantastic. Who is they, David Colt? Who is they? I would say anybody with an investment in power because we're talking about 
the use of keeping people in fear, I can drive it all the way back to the tribes and the shame and telling everybody, if you don't follow my special little ritual, the spirits won't sh uh, look happily on you and something bad will happen. So give me the shekels and let me do my rituals for you and you'll be happy. And then it grew into much more familiar institutions today such as religions with many rule books and some of them based in a lot of fear uh, sermons are based in fear uh if you've read the last book of the bible the rapture is huge on the terrifying things to come and, and i and what david says here this distraction is the control it is it really is uh hang on here no worries guys no worries Pearl, if that's you, man, I'll tell you what. I'll drop a stream in the chat. I'll drop a link in the chat if you want to come on. I have no problem. We could have a great chat. All right, guys. Give me a second here, and I'll drop that right in the chat. All righty. So, yeah, this whole thing about distraction, we all kind of get sucked into this. The thing I don't like about it is I did an experiment. I did an experiment in, 20, uh, in 2012. I went off of online stuff. Uh, I went on online. Uh, Mike Steele, you might have to put that in your chat. I didn't realize that, and I didn't want to paste it over all the chats. But uh, she's, um, in, she's in your channel. It's good. Oh, she is. Okay. I didn't see. Uh, but what I did is I removed myself from all social media, all news channels, all talk, uh, radio, all TV was ceased. Now, I could watch a movie if I knew something about it and I knew it wasn't politically uh, motivated. Now, there was such a thing as movies that didn't have a political agenda back in the day. I mean, today you can't get away from the woke agenda. It's pretty insane. It really is puzzling some of the stories that are put out there that make absolutely no sense unless you consider magical girl power then they make perfect sense. But if you consider girls have magical superpowers, they make a lot of sense. But if you're more based in reality, uh, some of the movies are really difficult to watch these days. I mean, I think the latest one that I watched that was kind of tolerable, which has moments of really odd dialogue that you know is geared towards this woke political agenda is Reacher. The main character actually does some very real things, which I'm surprised that the censors get away with because, mm -hmm. you know, he actually, uh, Pearl, you always look homeless. Come on. I mean, no, I'm just kidding. Nobody cares. Um, uh, you look great. Just come well, on. Look at us, Pearl. Look yeah, look at us. I mean, we're a savage bunch of uh, examples of uh, individuals. But you know, I just spilled tea on myself too. I I just spilled tea on myself, so it's fine. I can put my homeless beanie fine. back on. Bro. I need to go to the bar ring and my beard work it's on. Fine. So it's fine. <laughs> the dragon ship's kind of a dirty place, guys. I mean, we got ropes to haul, we got oars to pull, we got shields to put on the side, we got bleeding bells to host. We're bleeding out of our knuckles from dragging it across the deck. Hey, not a big deal, you know. Me and Nuke, you got reactors to operate. Yep. I mean, if you want to jump on and be a shield maiden, you're welcome to do so. Um, I've got a, I've got a couple of issues with that Rachel show, though. I do, too, it, actually. What, what's your issue? Just out of curiosity. Well, I, I really like the show. I really like the characters and everything. And I was never in the military, but I have lots of friends that were in the military. And we used to watch a lot of military movies. And I watch a lot of those videos online where they're talking about how accurate this movie is to the actual oh, it's military. Not, not accurate. Yeah. No, no, no. You know, you and belief. Yeah. the training, watching them like clear rooms and then watching mm. them um, move people from one area to the next uh, yeah. with cover fire makes me cringe so much because I'm thinking they did not do that correctly. Oh. He has his back to that doorway. He did not clear that room. I mean, it's like, that's why the guy jumped you in the back because I know. he literally walked right by the doorway and didn't check the room. I, you have to suspend some disbelief in order yeah. to work on the story because, I mean, if you're guys like me and others, they didn't slice the pie. Now you know they're at risk. They're probably going to get killed. Uh, and if you know what that means, then you know what that means. And, you know, I love the characters, but the little blonde gal in one uh, killed 14 guys to his 
five in the same yeah. circumstances. That blew me away. But you see some things like that. If you can look past it, uh, they center around classic revenge stories, which has a morality play in, embedded in it. You have to look for it. But out of today's mix, it's closer. Uh, the actual male character has the masculinity to kill his enemies mm -hmm. because they could come back on him. That's yeah. very rare to find uh, in today's shows. But anyway, didn't really want to talk about a bunch like of shows. The, but uh, like the same with me when I watched uh, like the first season of Last Resort as a boomer sailor. I'm like, that shit's never going to freaking happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got this hobby right now, which is kind of fun. I will walk watch some woke shows that are out there. Like there's this one called For All Mankind, which I call Woke in Space. And it's about an alternate reality of wokeness in space, literally. And we'll get a good episode. But the thing I've noticed with who I'm watching this with, and we laugh, you'll get a group of female writers and a female director for one or two episodes. They're the most worst possible shows ever. You spend five or ten minutes looking at each other like this. It's just looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I swear. And then somebody's upset. And then you'll get one or two episodes written by the original creator. And it'll have a male director. And it's like, shit. He killed that guy. That was unexpected, you know. And then it, it moved the story forward. Or it put it in a spot where there was a struggle. Which taught a lesson. So I always look for stories like that, but I found that that's pretty much the case. Even when you look at anything written on Apple today, you know, you want to look at legacy of monsters, which is a total fantasy. The first three episodes written by the creator. Fantastic. The next six of them written by a team of British women uh, and directed by a slew of different directors, multiple directors for one episode. Hmm. I don't think really works out. Well, you need just one director. Yeah. And, uh, they were horrible. And then the season, the, the season finale written by the guy that created it and directed and much, much better. They could have eliminated the entire middle and it still would have been a great story. Okay. So I just find it really entertaining to look at the credits. And I got to the point where I could kind of predict what's going to happen based on the credits. It was like a watch Rick and Morty. Like look at the Witcher and six are just oh, trash. That totally happened with the Witcher. Mm -hmm. and yeah. That's one of the greatest well, characters cool. ever. My favorite video game of all time is The Witcher 3. And I'm like, if they oh, made yeah. this into a show, they're, they're going to make it woke because, like, you can't have a cool, bearded, uh, strong guy with two swords slicing people's heads off, having sex with witches, and just being stoic and cool all the time and make it into a mainstream show. That ain't going to fly. So they took, uh, I think, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer yep. and made her, like, the main character almost. Yep. And it, yep, just, like, it felt like, mm -hmm. yeah, and it felt like Geralt was, like, the, the supporting character. You know, yeah. yep. oh, hundred percent. That's where uh, that's like guys... where Games Workshop, when they made the deal with Amazon and Henry Cavill, was to protect the IP as much as possible because uh, Games Workshop saw what uh, Amazon did with like Lord of the Rings and made it woke as hell. And Games Workshop's like, no, you're gonna only have Henry Cavill and approved other personnel who will respect the IP work yep. on this project when yeah. it comes to fluorescent. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Those guys are base. I love yeah. them. I yeah. might actually get into yeah. Warhammer 40k just because of their principles. Dude, I, I love those Warhammer 40k lore. And yeah. you got a lot of pushback in that fandom right now because everyone's bitching like, why can't we have female space marines? Well, the lore says because there's James the Emperor balls. Commands. Yeah, the Emperor's uh, genetic material is in the balls of each space marine. You can't have female <laughs> space marines because of that. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. the Adeptus Sororitas, which are badass females in right. power armor already. But uh, you right. have like uh, the, the the creator of One Piece. He's uh, involved in the in the show, the Netflix show of One Piece, and that it's one of the best shows of last year because the, yeah. the director and the like the guy who created One Piece is like you're not gonna screw around with my with my my project, my my artwork. You know, like you're not you're. It's gonna be run through me, and it's funny because the same people that made One Piece also made Cowboy Bebop, and Cowboy Bebop flopped horribly. But then they yeah. got the 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 creator of One Piece involved in in the in the creation of the show, and One Piece is like the the best, if not one of the best, uh, manga to Netflix show ad adaptations of all time. Oh yeah, I'm looking for that because I saw Cowboy Bebop first couple episodes kind of okay, and then I, I I noticed it fell off a cliff completely, and uh, when they when the other character joined them. Um, the female character joined them. I noticed it fell off a cliff and I started noticing this is one of the few movies where I started noticing the writing and the directing team all changed. And this was before uh, I realized when I did the research on our episode on uh, the death of Hollywood heroes, 
that there's something called a Bechtel score that all media has to basically meet in order to get distribution by the large uh, studios. And uh, there's actually requirements. If you guys, I'm not going to go through here, but the Bechtel score demands these things. And the entire staffs that are writing these now all have to pass DEI and the funding is done through their ESG scores, environmental social governance. So if they want to borrow money to make these things, they're beholden. They, they are servants of whoever is putting the agenda forward. The reason I brought this up is the really good stories. They do get you emotionally invested and it's fearful. It's frightening because the main character, something's happening or you lose the mentor. What are we going to do? And then there's a struggle and then there's this rebirth. And in a way, this kind of plays out in your own life. If you're all wrapped up into this fear porn that's being broadcast everywhere, that seems to really hit a peak in these election years is now is bleeding into the year before and the year after, and then you might get a year break. <laughs> What's funny about yeah. that, Thor, is that uh, a lot of uh, adult entertainment, shall we say, starring two women, passes the Bechtel test and they refuse to acknowledge that. <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, did you guys notice just about everything that's out there now has a lesbian love scene? Mm-hmm. Everything. Or, or a gay love All scene it, with yeah. two guys. Yeah. That too. Yeah. And then there's a ton of race swapping where that's fine, but when they do it in a period piece, it just kind of ruins it. Like Isaac Especially Newton. if it's specific, you know? Or the uh, mm-hmm. or that what was that show uh, Bridger or Bridgerton? The the Queen's uh, Black? I mean, it's supposed to be like a uh, the queen before Victoria, okay. like queen, queen Charlotte. Oh, they did a black uh, Viking Thane queen as well. Yeah, that was yeah. a complete fantasy. It didn't exist, and they named her after Cleopatra. Well, the yeah, um, Cleopatra. Yeah. Like just make it, <laughs> just make Dungeons and Dragons movies and do whatever the heck you want with them, because then it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, so yeah, 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 D and D is completely well, fantasy. You can do whatever you well, want. Well, that. That's the problem that they'll start making certain races orcs, and then they'll be like, "Well, you know, you think that certain races should be orc?" Like it, it. There's just no winning. You, you well, will never win. You will. That happened with win. Amazon with the Rings of Power because they're like, "Ah, oh, you're, 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 uh, what the heck is it? You're patronizing the, uh, the orcs. You're, you're, uh, holding them back." Are you guys yeah, literally born for magical mud. girl power, <laughs> girl boss yeah. power. It's yeah, even better I, than the rings. You don't have to have the rings to have all that power. And they're there. and they're about and they're gonna make all fem- like a female led Star Wars movie now. Like as if that franchise isn't dead enough, you know. They're that's going to right. absolutely bury that's it. Now. Right. That's as, right. As South Park said, put a chick in it, and make her gay. Yeah, <laughs> now we're gay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty wild. Now <laughs> now there's rumor. I'm I I'm gonna show some websites coming up here and there's things going on, but it's reached so far that in neocon Republican circles, and I hate to go there, but there now is a school of thought that says that whoever runs for president cannot run for president without a female uh, on the ticket for vice president because the standard's been set. Have you guys heard that yet? Yeah, I heard it. It's just a, it's just a move to get friggin' neo neocon Warhawk Nikki Haley want to bomb everybody into office. That's the that's the goal is to get her as the VP or the or as the president. Talk like about that, fierce, they're that, buddy. Yeah, they're doing that stuff in New Hampshire where they're literally begging the Democrats during the upcoming prime Republican primary because they're allowed to vote in both primaries to vote for Nikki Haley to get her on the ticket instead of uh, Trump or DeSantis or uh, Vivek. Yeah, fear fear is a really ugly thing when it's uh, widely spread and accepted. I mean, look what we did in World War II with the internment camps and all that stuff. I mean, we should have learned lessons uh, because us human beings don't have any firewall between the electrochemical stocks of our ears and our eyes and our subconscious tends to believe everything that is said. And then we have to use the actual energy of rational thought, which is the more difficult path to disseminate what actually is reality, you know, and uh, that's hard. And yeah. so if you can control the narrative through fear, it's an easy way to do it. But boy, um, I'd hate to think that we all do that, but it seems like every every civilization has moved in that direction. Yeah. What do you think? Well, what well the the problem is too is that whatever whatever fear thing happens, someone gets paid, right? As a as a guy who used to be uh, me and AJ were former nuclear operators. Um, do you know? So, what made our job so difficult in the military for me and AJ was that. Everyone was scared of nuclear power. You know, everyone's seen the movies. We've seen Godzilla. 
We've seen three. We we heard about Three Mile Island. I mean, we had to learn for Fukushima. Yeah, we we uh, we were. I was in right after Fukushima. I think I was I was underway when we got the report. Yeah, um, and you know it made our job really hard because now we have to prove to the world that nuclear power is safe. So how do we do that by extreme, like extreme measures to to make sure that we'll never make a mistake ever? So it made our job really hard. A lot of my friends lost their mind because it was too much stress and all that stuff. So I understand how the outside world feeling some fear can affect you as a person because now um you know in my industry or what was my industry people kind of like didn't were, weren't okay we were all like dukes are not known to be mentally stable we're meant to be we're, we're our perceptions that we're depressed and overworked because of the high standards of operating nuclear power so no, i'm very familiar suicide rate yeah and i'm very familiar with that so um but the problem is with like if i as a an executive, an energy executive, look that people are afraid of nuclear power. I'm going to be like, hmm, if I can sell them oil instead of nuclear power, or I can sell them a different power source, then I'm going to push the button on making look nuclear power look bad, even though it's better. Right. So well, it's, here, it's like because of the Fukushima incident, Germany literally shut down all their nuclear power plants and now right. it is reliant on that natural gas coming from guess who? Russia. Yeah, yeah. Um, one decision they, France made in a good way. They doubled their nuclear power, and they're fine yeah. now. Cheap as yeah. electricity and, rates, right? The people and then people then people learn their lesson the hard way. Like here in Texas, a lot of our power is wind power out in West Texas. Um, and then we had the freeze, and then we didn't have windmills anymore, and we people were like freezing to death here in in in, in Texas yeah. because 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 we didn't have uh, nuclear power to kind of like step because we have our own energy grid um, to like kind of like fill the gaps in, in energy use right so there's, there, there's there is consequence as well yeah i mean but if we had more nuclear reactors it wouldn't have been exactly. as bad i, I yeah. agree with you there but it was like also like the person who runs ERCOT, which is like the yeah it was a dumbass board yeah. it was a yeah. dumbass that lives in freaking michigan doesn't yeah. live in true. Texas. true yeah. but you know what nuke brings up a really good point and, and aj you'll know this too i'm in the i've been in the electric utility industry for a very long time i was in the crisis when deregulation happened and right now, the WEF is, uh, which is the World Economic Forum, is broadcasting along with uh, elements of our government that a cyber attack or an EMP or even a coronal mass ejection that causes an electromagnetic pulse will take the grid down. Yes, an EMP can take the grid down. It has in Canada and Africa before. And it's very serious. When the power's gone, things go to hell very, very quickly. The stores only have about uh, 36 hours worth of food in it. And if you're not getting electricity in there, what do you think happens? That's a huge problem. Um, however, Texas has its own independent grid. That's a good thing. Uh, where I'm at on the Western grid and the inner ties, they've been hardening the system for at least nine years, I'm aware of, maybe longer where it can segment itself from a cyber attack could they uh you know take down some areas yes but the the power grid is far more resilient than that and they've been hardening it quite a bit they spent money on this so if there is a grid down situation it would have to be done kind of on the inside um and you know it's a fully regulated industry uh even more than people understand out west here, we have something called smart meters where they can turn off your power remotely, right? Instantly, they can turn it off remotely with these smart meters that communicate with microwaves via transmission on power lines. Um, these, these meters, when we installed them, had several uh, requirements, and the requirements were given to us by the Department of Energy. They can transmit data, and there are two entities that deal with these smart meters, one is the operator and one is the owner. You would think that the utility is the owner of these smart meters. You would be wrong. Who is the owner of these smart meters? Department, Department of, Energy. of Energy. That's correct. And they have authority over the operation of these smart meters. Could there be in a cyber attack and they could shut down all the smart meters? That is possible. That is entirely possible. So there is risk there. But it's going to get everybody afraid, and with with everybody afraid, they will give away their freedoms and their rights to have a sense of security that things won't go wrong. And that's kind of what I see being ramped up constantly now. 
Anyway, I probably <laughs> cited every, everybody on the electric. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but, but, but uh, to finish, Christianity unplugged. Like, uh, what what do you mean by uh, why did the U.S. use the wrong nuclear power system for its power plants? Can you uh, can you be more specific in that questioning? Because there's several different types of reactor plants that we've used for commercial industry, and a few different extra different ones in the uh, in the U.S. Navy. Yeah, fear yeah, just has a, really crippled the nuclear industry in the U.S. Um, what, what's fear? You're really supposed to do. It's supposed to make you risk risk adverse. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If, sure. if, if this ha- if this happens, then that's the there's the risk that this is going to, happen. and it's to make you risk adverse. And mm-hmm. part of humanity and part of the human makeup is to take risk. We we don't move forward unless we take a risk. And the control comes in from the fact is. I'm going to eliminate risk from your life. Therefore, I'm going to eliminate pain from your life if you do what I ask you to do. Yeah. So they're playing, they're playing, the, you know, it's playing with the psychology of, of human nature. Yeah. All right. And it's, it's making, the entire, go ahead. It's, it's attacking your vulnerabilities. Yeah. So, and out of the entire population, guys, and I'll get to this a little bit later, I want to get your take on the fact that at least in the last two cycles, if not further, the complementary role that males and females play with each other in life has been eroded completely by design. And it's made men and women fearful of each other by design and by action. Uh, I've heard it said before that all politics is, or all power is sexual in nature and, and, and politics is about power. So I find it really interesting. You want to erode a society, get the men and women at each other's throats and not getting along, you know, with a distraction like that, you can't really put too much together uh, coherently. Let me share a screen guys, just about what I was talking about when it comes to um, when it comes to this cycle and this ever increasing cycle and, and guys jump in and interrupt when you see anything here. Uh, so that, that you find interesting. Okay, let's get over here. I want to show you guys this. Where is it at? Yeah, here it is. Are you guys seeing this okay? Yeah. I can see it, yeah. Good, let me expand my screen. Oh, dear God. Well, that took 0.1 second. <laughs> <laughs> so here is a simple search. 20, 2024, gentlemen, election year fear. So there's a lot of young people that are in our audiences that we talk to, you know, uh, people that are really intelligent. They want to learn more. I mean, Pearl's audience is very young and and some of them listen to us, but here we go. This is 2024. This is MSNBC. What I'm already afraid of, you know, better be scared. The guardian puts out better be scared. Threats of political violence foretell a tense election year. Uh, Here's another one. Perils of the election year world. Uh, now <clears throat> Barack Obama is getting involved in the 2024 race over Trump fears. What do you think that does? Uh, wouldn't this be kind of an advantage for maybe the Trump side to put out there? Wouldn't that kind of whip up the people that believe a certain way and vice versa? Here's three big tech fears. We talk about spying. All this stuff is done. So you'll buy certain things. You'll see you. I'm going to go into it. This is all about, oh, this is horrible, but there's advertisements everywhere that offers you safety. Interesting, interesting. Uh, How do death threats influence Republicans that follow Trump? U.S. election booms. Investors fear for fiscal peace. I mean, this is another one that goes hand in hand with these years. Look at at Argentina last year when they elected uh, uh, Javier Mali. Like literally, the WEF is going after him because he's yes. gotten all the shit that they put in place. He's like, nah, fuck this shit. And, and that's pretty revealing because if that was told, you could tell immediately who's telling the truth, what reality actually is. Yeah. Like and I don't if, know. If Klaus is saying that Miley's a bad dude, mm-hmm. Miley's probably a good dude. But uh, yeah, just uh, keep an eye on him because I don't know who all knows this. He just got invited and accepted an invitation to the WEF. So the question is. Yeah. Is he going there to uh, fall in line or is he going there to flip them off? And Well, his, his corporations that are there are all members. 
You got to realize that. Yeah. So the economy there is borrowing money through the IMF through that organization. So they have to follow ESG scores as well. Um, it's scary. You got, you guys have all heard Musk talk about ESG. Yeah. One of the few guys that's out there that has enough fuck you money to say, you guys need to look at this. None of my companies belong. None. Pretty interesting. Really interesting to take that philosophy. Yeah. Is he doing it to be cantankerous? No, it's because you become beholden as a servant. If you take the money, you are the servant. And I got to tell you, we're going to do another episode. We're going to talk about the transactional nature of life because it stretches right into this intersectional dynamics. And if you understand that and you learn how to become useful and you target your usefulness, you can have tremendous good life and all that sort of things, you know, success. Here's some top five fears. Now you got to realize these are all amazing. The number one fear is social media focused campaigns. Why would that be false equivalencies, voter suppression and intimidation? Oh my God. What kind of fear are people going to die? What is this? Third party hucksters. I bet you we might fit in there, huh? <laughs> what did we learn about the red pillars? Oh, I or love that last one. Identified that's so, as a that's radical. So, that's so look at that last one, number five. That's so reductive and racist. I, like pawns, so black people who want to vote for Trump are incapable of thinking for themselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, look who wrote it. Oh, a black guy wrote it. Well, that kind of goes back to like even uh, so Vladimir Lenin talking about uh, the useful idiots. Mm -hmm. True. Very true. So these are just examples I wanted to take you guys through. Uh, oh, the same one. Sorry. Um, okay. Here's Mark, another one. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Increase in world ending fear during elections. Simple Google. There is election workers being bombarded with death threats. It, it, I'm not going to dig into it, but if you dig into this, most of it's just it's not really actually true. But somebody said it, and when you ring certain bells, they can't be unrung. And this is back in 2020. Uh, there's all kinds of fearful things. Apparently, uh, white men are something to be afraid of because of fear and rage. This is quite an interesting one. I don't need to go there uh, because you'll, you'll get the point in a minute. This is nothing new. Uh, this it's one's interesting. On the other side. This one's interesting because this one talks about fear being the tool of the global expansion of authoritarian rule. I think that's actually true. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. Kind of back to Klaus Schwab when Miley got elected, he said, he literally yeah. said, kind of separate from the Miley getting elected, but he literally did say that libertarianism is a threat to all the work that the WEF has been doing over the last 20, 30 years. Yeah, good. this is a good one. I'll drop the link if you want to know more, but uh, the big one right now is democracy. Democracy is threat, under threat. Oh, what's with that? Into, uh, what's with that language there above that article, Thor? What's that there? Is that Chinese? Yeah. Uh, I can't tell if it's Chinese or Korean, man. That's interesting. Uh, it could be Chinese. Sure, of course it is. CCP. Uh, PRC. Hmm. Wow. Mm, well, I thought CCP stood for the California Communist Party. Uh, yeah, it does that too, but it's also the, uh, what is it, the Chinese Communist Party? Oh, well, they fund. Same, the one, one, in, one in the Party. same, man. One in the same. Yeah. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Now, just so you know, the election year fighting misinformation is messier and more important than ever. I'm actually going to show you that's not true. Reality is not that. But if this is what you're being fed, you're in for a very depressive state. Your brain chemistry will start to adjust to this. Your subconscious mind will start to believe this is real. Uh, and it's not real. Okay. How do you know this, Thor? I mean, why? This is worldwide. Corporations are heavily involved in this. Taiwan election 2024. Ukraine conflict stirs growing fears as voters mull ways to counter the Chinese threat. Now, um, well, haven't they talked about suspended, uh, Anybody here, election? Nikki Haley? Dude, she is going to take. Here's a supposed conservative candidate that is so afraid of you being on the internet, even though you're a good person, that to protect you and to protect the grid and to protect against cyber tech, that you must officially register and be a license holder that is allowed to use the internet by name. Think I'm lying? I'm not. No, she, she, said, she said that. Like, and but yet she doesn't even go by her real name. 
<laughs> I know. I know. Uh, we could do a whole episode about female leadership in American politics. <laughs> we should, but I, I don't she's really a, need to go she, there. She is a see you next Tuesday. So you guys just, what I mean. just to get your guys flavor. Look at this. This was almost 10 years ago. Fear strikes out. Look at this. I mean, 1984. It, it's crazy. Yes. It every single time. And I'm just going to bounce through a couple of these fear and loathing in the 2012 election. If you guys read through this, it is exactly the same language I showed you in the 2024. Exactly the same language. U.S. set for a year of fear. 2016. Go through here and look at it. I'll drop the links later because it's pretty damn amazing. How about 2008, gentlemen? Fear 2008 meltdown. It is exactly the same language from every side involved. There are no neutral parties with your best interest in mind. None. Here's more from across the entire globe. Uh, Macron, headline, we're an economic foreman. I mean, this stuff's been going on for a while. They talked to each other. Here's the 2024 World Economic Forum. Click on this. Look at the DEI. Look at their political, uh, um, they call it the path forward. I mean, that's really Marx's terms, but the path forward for the world, and it talks about politics and corporate, how corporations will actually dictate the path forward. And I believe this is actually true because really it boils down to the money. Just like with YouTube, the controversies and beefs push the money to the influencers. And you can't help it. A person is making a, a living for their family. You don't want them to go hungry. You will always be influenced if you take the money by your master because you are the servant. So I thought that was really interesting. It crosses all of these election cycles. And there we go. You know, uh, talks about. Marriages and mortgages influencing election outcomes. I mean, there is so look much. At the, stuff. Look at the lack of accountability right there. What's that one say? Donald Trump is destroying my marriage. I'm genuinely curious, Thor. What's <laughs> that one? I, 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 oh, I, oh I, yeah, right there. I see in New York. Oh, that's like an op ed. So it is. And I, I had some statistics about politics and marriage and relationships. I actually do, but I couldn't go through it all. Apparently, there's more stress in relationships in election years. And I don't think it's because of the binary political system. You know what I think it is? And this, I, I'm, I'm going to stand by this. Let me go ahead and stop this particular share. Um, where am I here? Yeah, let's get that out of there. What I think it is, gentlemen, correct me if I'm wrong. In fact, I want to have a conversation on this. Um, I think it's, there is essentially, I mean, I hate to call it a spirit, but there's an esoteric aspect of this that lies in our subconscious when you hear this kind of stuff all the time. And if you look at these and read these, there's an underlying current of um, gender stress, uh, of gender um, conflict. Mm. And you add this on top of it. What do you talk about with the females in your life? I mean, I talk about emotional things, kids, family, sex, just playful things. But a lot of people will talk about what's on TV what politics are about, uh, their girlfriends influence each other. Do, are you going to this rally or this or that? Uh, we've got to do something. And, and uh, I've seen an increase in this in by association with women in the groups. I've seen middle class where they're really getting involved, man. They think the world's going to come to the end. Uh, I saw this a few years ago with the human trafficking. And I saw this group of women that are in my social circle go absolutely crazy about it. Go get CCWs because they were scared people were going to take their children. And, uh, of course, even though the stat said this was nigh impossible where we live, um, but the propaganda was out there because it had happened once or twice. And so well, I could I could tell you why this happens, uh, Thor. Please, uh, especially in, in our generation. So as millennials, we were we were told since we were like ki uh, kids that we were uh, we were going to fix everything. Our generation was the one the world was like messed up and we were going to be the ones to fix everything. So we have this like messianic complex about ourselves. Um, so when we we went to college, we started becoming like activists or social like that's where the term social justice warrior, because we thought, hey, you know, this well oiled machine that is the world where planes are already flying and there's good plumbing and buildings are going up and it's running just fine we need to be the ones to fix it and then we 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 grew up and then we start working we realize wait 
we're not that important. Like the world was running just fine. So instead of just like integrating into society, maybe improving and tweaking little things here and there, what we did was like, hey, let's let's join these social causes like global warming, anything that has like if you don't support this, it's the end of the world, whether it be the conflict in the Middle East or global warming or uh, get Trump out of office, whatever your flavor of social justice. Um, a lot of people started doing that and they realized like, oh, this gives me a little bit of meaning because everyone else around me is telling me that this is meaningful. And then they say, you know, then they, they have to make a choice. Like I could go back into the shadows, have a family and live my life and just be a normal human being, or I can save the world. Um, and a lot of people think saving the world is the better option. And what happens is they start, uh, they start realizing like, Hey, like every year is a different social cause or something that's pulling me away from my own happiness. And then pe some people give up and then some people just go crazy. You know, oh, like, wow. every year oh, you said that because that is exactly what I noticed. It had to be replaced with either another fear or it had to be replaced with something that had an equivalent emotional impact on their lives so that that became less of an issue. In fact, I was going to talk about how do we assuage these fears? And if you're having them and, you, and you're starting to get stress and anxiety, you need to disconnect from these, but find another way to regulate that emotion, be it through something constructive or positive, really makes a difference because you can't just yeah. stop these things. Every time I saw like the trafficking thing change in a woman, it's because she replaced it with something else. Generally, something else that was just as salacious, just as frightening. Rarely would I see it as being something that was positive and constructive. I've even and seen for many women things. now, it's uh it's the red pill. That's the new climate change, is the red it pill. Is, the red pill is gonna it? make yeah, and that's why um they're going to find new ways to attack. They're gonna blame whoever whichever candidate loses, they're gonna blame the red pill or whoever, like Andrew Tate, whatever version of what they think this stuff is, they're gonna blame that. And you know, um people are going to protest maybe in the future, or people are going to make it their um prerogative to take us down even though they don't know what we are right they yeah. think that taking a single person down is going to stop the red pill i'm like no, no. Well, it's like because a few it's, weeks it's ago, like, it's not right so yeah, so that's like, really nothing new wraith you have an extensive reading background and i know that you've read 1984 it's eric blair well actually his pen name is george orwell he also wrote animal farm my god that's a good one this man he was involved in the marxist communist party in india and before he knew all the playbooks and he wrote these books. It, it seems like they're intensely prophetic warnings that have pretty much all come true. Well, wasn't uh, he Ray, part did of you like want the to British do some comments on that? I, didn't, I didn't know what you said. Or what could be more. Okay, so I see your comments and I was talking about uh, George Orwell, also known as Eric Blair, a little bit right. of his background and how you might want to comment on that because it was very prophetic. Uh, 1984, an animal farm of some of the places we find ourselves yeah the, the, the thing about 1984 and it used to be required reading when i was um so you know coming out of world war ii and after experiencing what you know not what had happened in germany with the nazi party and how how they tried to um i guess organize a society uh, and orwell's biggest fear was that people, when you talk about animal farm, that people could be controlled like animals. Yes. Their, basic, their basic instincts. And 1984 was was put out there as a way that that happens in some respect uh, in society. And, but, and that's where, you know, social norming and stuff, all that comes from that book on how to create social norms that people will follow and not buck against those norms and when what we were just you guys were just talking about was uh, in the book was called group thing and i posted in, you know in the private chat i posted a couple examples so um and i'll, I'll read it says what is group th group think what is is group think in the book 1984 1949 orwell coined the term group think in his book 1984 in 1972, psychologist Irving John Janus popularized it to describe the phenomenon of a group of people reaching consensus without assessing ideals critically. And that's exactly what's going on today. Mm -hmm. no, no one is critically thinking about what's coming across the Internet 
They're just accepting it as true. All right. right. And then uh, there was an example of group thinking in the same thing. It says an example of group think might be the, <clears throat> the leader of a group telling everyone that they need to ban all members of a particular ethnic group from joining them. And then the members of this group accepting that decision without question. And we see that time and time again today. All right. And what's the biggest example of that right now? <clears throat> uh, ban white dudes. Mm-hmm. Right. You gotta get right. Cis, cisgendered white dudes. Right. Because so, they're, they're 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 judging they're judging the value based on um what they think are the worst parts of that group and saying that one small thing is worse than anything else that they could contribute. And yeah, they essentially theory. adopted the apex fallacy by picking the absolute worst thing and then painting the rest of the group. Common human right. trait. Right. And, and one of the, one of the, my problems with that is that those people tend, the group you're trying to exclude, other people tend to adopt that same apex, apex fallacy as a right or a justification for their behavior. Mm. So... <clears throat> When you don't, when you don't understand that, you know, or go back and look at people like Orwell, um, you know, and look at what they were trying to tell us, we fall into, you know, uh, lemmings was a big thing in the seventies and eighties. Yeah. We become lemmings because we're not thinking of critically for ourselves. And that's one of the things that, you know, um, I try to teach young men when I work with them. You need to start thinking critically. Mm-hmm. You need to start thinking about what you want to know, how you're going to, you know, how, how you're going to express that, how you're going to bring that into your life. Right. If you're active, if you're active in creating your own reality or creating your own life, you have, you're less worried about fear because you understand that there's risk and you understand that every decision you make creates risk. And all they're trying right. to do through advertisement stuff is to tell you, we can make this risk, we can make this risk free for you. If you just do what we say, and they're trying to take the, they're using fear to eliminate fear. In, in, a, in a sense, and then basically what they're doing, what they're saying is, <clears throat> this fear, <clears throat> this fear that I'm giving you is le- the lesser of the two evil fears. They choose the lesser, one. you know, and that means giving up your rights. <laughs> that's actually a philosophy that I held, but in a different format. I held the fact that if you get good at making making the uh, the best of the worst decision, that you can do better in life, you know, because you're always faced with a ton of, of bad decisions. But this leads me to the group. Uh, what I wanted to ask, and I want to give everybody a chance. I'm going to start with Viking Dad. So um, 2024, the year of fear. I mean... How does our listeners and people that hear this bolster themselves against these subconscious attacks and these social restrictions that are given to us through media, friends, and social influence? How do we best prepare ourselves for these and not necessarily fight back, but how do we, and not necessarily isolate either, but uh, what are the best ways to combat this so that we get to live the dream? And we get to express the opportunities because when there's this much restriction and there's these kind of infights going on between men and women, there are opportunities that abound, you know, uh, economically, socially, uh, when, when there's a lot of political upheaval, how do we identify that stuff? And how do we protect ourselves against all of this information coming in that's so negative and so fearful? What do you guys take on that? Viking dad, you have any ideas? How do you do it for yourself? How do you, get away from this for yourself, for your own sanity. I just don't listen. Like that's, that's the best way to do it is you just don't listen to it because uh, when it comes to a lot of politics, people will ask me about something. I have no idea what they're talking about Um, because um, I just, I know that you have to have your own circle of your universe and what you can control in that universe. Mm -hmm. And I have no control over the government and what they do. I know my vote doesn't count. I know we haven't had a real election. Like <laughs> before I was born, 
Yeah. And uh, so I can vote on who I want to, but you know, it's they're going to get who they want in there anyway. Yeah. And it's going to be a, a circle of the same stuff, not happening and not getting done until the next election. And uh, Rolo has a really good philosophy when he'll start talking about, okay, here's the mid elections. They're going to talk about this. And here's the regular elections. They're going to talk about this. And then it's going to cycle back to the next time and cycle back to the next time. And they really do do the same thing. And if you just watch them, it's funny, but if you're a regular guy and you're trying not to get caught up in the fear of elections and, and all that stuff, what you have to do is you have to watch something or read something, stop what you're doing, step back objectively and go, can I really affect this? And can this really affect me? Like, what can I do in this situation to change this, which is nothing. And uh, how is this going to affect me directly? Not at all. So um, a, a lot of people were talking about all the, the arguing back and forth with the fear mongering and, uh, and the stuff going on online, on Twitter right now with politics and everything. And I'm just sitting back in there reading it going, okay, that's great. And then flipping back to reality and uh, doing whatever I want to do and uh, talking to people, having a good time and, not worrying about it. Just living in my little universe. Okay. That sounds like a pretty good plan. Uh, who wants to go next? I will. How do you, Mike, how do you deal with this fear? How, what is, what is your, especially when it's being bombarded to you and do you ever feel like you've heard enough? It's enough now. And do you, what is your response? Well, I, I mitigate it first of all, by, I don't even own a television. Mm -hmm. I don't read any, not a single mainstream media uh, news article. Event, uh, occasionally, like if there's a local event, like uh, when we had an unfortunate uh, mass pew pew at uh, Las Vegas University of mm -hmm. Las Vegas, I read local news articles about it um, because it does that does affect me directly because the dude was right down the street. I need to know. Right. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, it's just a, a little bit of Tim Pool on Monday mornings, and, and that's it. Uh, because I do believe we need to stay informed. So if something is about to happen or they're thinking about doing something, we need that information so that we can maneuver appropriately mm -hmm. to res in response to it, even if we can't stop it. But for the most part, I just I don't talk about it. I'm, I'm just too busy. Yeah, I'm. You yeah. know, I'm. 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 I'm dating people. I'm. I'm going to work. I've got a lot of responsibilities. I'm leveling up my career. Really, all I care about is, uh, you know, saving up my money, earning more money, buying a house, and possibly starting a family. Like that. That's my tunnel vision right now. And the way, the best way I know to affect a positive change on the world is to marry uh, someone who's on my program and raise children. That are also patriots. Yeah. That's really yeah. all I can do. Very good. Very good. Very good. Little Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> detailing Viking. What's your approach to all this? I mean, th this can be too much sometimes. I mean, I was a huge fan of Alex Jones uh, and uh, Redacted and some of those for many, many years. But uh, just like watching Tucker Carlson, there's, I, I, they're right. Kind of and they of have that. true things about it. And these conspiracies sometimes are very, very true, but they're so damn frightening and fearful. How do they affect your life or do you even let them? I mean, I have my own method of dealing with it, but what, how do you deal with all of this coming in? Some of it's real, some of it's fake. So like the first thing off the bat, like uh, like you said right there, some of it's real, some of it's fake. Uh, our good friend, uh, Sam Prashansky, you know him, yeah. Sam. Oh yeah, he I know Sam. It, he used to say in uh, the alumni chat for uh, Masculine Empowerment Network, everything's fake and gay. So that's one way to look at it. Um, I haven't had cable television since I got divorced in or filed for divorce in 2015. Um, but I have like other things. Like I keep a healthy bit of nihilism and some cynicism and some skepticism mixed in there when it comes to this kind of stuff. Because uh, that affected me in 2016 during that election. I was actually uh, doorbelling to get Gary Johnson on the ballot in Washington State because I am a card carrying libertarian. He made the 5.05% or he made about 5% of the popular vote in the state to get on to the have ballot access for libertarians. Well, the secretary of state then, even though it's a democratic state was a Republican, he went and got the write-in 
candidates' names and dropped his average down below 5%, so the Libertarians didn't get ballot access again in Washington State. So that kind of turned me off a little bit. And then in 2017, I actually ran for city council in Bremerton, Washington, and it's supposed to be nonpartisan. Oh, it is partisan as hell. The uh, the two main parties had their candidates uh, back, so they did all the phone calling for them, whereas I was actually on the ground doorbelling. Like, I had a six-month period where I was only getting, like, three hours of sleep a day between work and actually running my own campaign. I only got 200 votes of the 800 casted, so that kind of threw me off of that. But at the same time, nowadays, it's just like, I just don't let it bother me. I got too many things going on in life, and I think one of the things that I kept with me from when I was a young little nuclet in prototype, my uh, LPO told me, to be a good sailor, you have to know all the rules and follow them. To be a good RC division personnel, you need to know all the rules and how to bend them to your will. So... That's right, right, right. Those are good methods. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, Nuke, what, what, how do you approach this? You've been around. Um, and here's the thing. I would think, I know everybody is affected by this. You are not immune. So you do have to develop a cope skill when it comes to this kind of information of fear and frightening stuff that's bombarding you, whether it's true or whether it's fake, we're all exposed to it. So there has to be an efficient way to deal with it, or it can eat you alive. I remember listening too much to Alex Jones, not realizing it was all the truth, but Jesus, I started to get like, what the hell? Um, so this was 20 years ago because it sounded so outrageous, but it was true. Uh, so I definitely developed a way of dealing with it as well. So what, what's your take on it, Newt? Uh, well, step one, realize that uh, you're not a woman, so you don't have to live in anxiety. You are a man. Um, you have testosterone levels that allow you to take look at a situation and be like, all right, what can I do to make this better? Um, so step one, realizing you're a man, you were designed to thrive in chaos, right? Um, you're not designed to sit in an office all day and read articles about how someone 1,000 miles away is signing a paper that's going to ruin your life. <laughs> that's not what you're designed as a man. As a man, you're designed to kill, to have sex, to kill again. And to have sex again and eat yeah. and raise mm -hmm. kids and, and all that stuff. You are you are designed to live in the real world and interface with danger almost 80% of the time. Like, that's why we go to the gym. Like, subconsciously, we know that getting strong is looking at fear and danger and being like, I have to prepare for this. And uh, when it comes, I'll be ready. Right? That's what we are. Problem is, we live in a gynocentric social order where now, like... um what women feel is the number one most important thing, right? Mm -hmm. I don't care if you feel scared of going outside because of, of a disease that I'm statistically almost impossible for me to die of, die from. I don't care. I'm a man. I I am ready to die at any moment. Like, it, it is what it is, right? I fear death, but like a healthy fear. Um, and then number two, take stock of, of your life over the, like, look at it as a function of time, right? So, we have the election year coming. Did the world end in 2008 election? No. Did the world end in 2012? No. 2016? No. 2020? It looked like it was, but no. Um, so the, the water's still running. You know, the electricity is still like I, I no outages in my apartment in the past like two years. Um, planes are still flying. Uh, you know, crime is still pretty much the same here in Dallas. Like, like. You have to look back and say, okay, they're saying that things are going to go bad and the country is going to go to crap, right? But it's just like every year my life gets more comfortable. I get more jacked. I make more money. I make more yeah. friends and I have a more positive outlook. And it's not because suddenly I woke up one day and was like, you know what? I'm going to be positive. I just woke up one day and, like, and, and was like, hey, things aren't so bad. Like things are continually getting a little bit better. There are ups and downs in life just like, but there has to be because you know, that's just life. So basically, uh, realize you're a man and you're designed to, to thrive in chaos. And number two, uh, life will happen. There, you know, there are people, there have been worse times and people have gone through it. And there have been worse times in your own life where, and you've gone through it. So what's different now? You know, well, what's I like it. I really do like it because, you know, at the end of the day, of course, life is going to go on. Uh, girls are still going to smell nice and have body parts that look great to us. And uh, life's good, isn't it? Wraith, how do you cope with all this uh, fear mongering? Uh, or, or, well, you know, you're a pretty solid wisdom guy. Maybe it just rolls right off you like water off a duck's back. I know we're all exposed to it, so there's always an effect. I, I guess if, if I would look at someone and 
talk to them about it, I would say, first off, you got to do is, is learn, learn to know yourself. Because once you know yourself, you know what your limitations are, you know what your decisions um, and um, how you're going to react. Learn yourself. Think critically. Uh, anything that comes into your preview, think about it critically. Don't accept it. Look at, uh, you know, the fallacies in every every comment. Uh, and simplify your life. You know, way too many people are, you know, it's one thing to have money. I mean, we we strive for that because it offers us a level of comfort. But you also need to understand life is not comfortable. Mm. There are struggles in life and you're going to deal with them. And if you can, you know, struggle at the level you're at, then you can struggle, struggle at a higher level also. Mm-hmm. So there, there shouldn't be any bounds to, you know, progress. Your, your individual progress or the, the progress of your family, your income or anything like that. Too many people get to thinking that when I get to the point where I'm in a, in a, in a place where I'm happy, that's where I want to stay. Mm-hmm. Happy, happiness is an illusion. It's not a constant. That's happiness, true. Happiness is a repose from the struggle. Life is about struggle. Too many people don't want to struggle. All right. You struggle from the time you come out of the birth canal and you keep struggling because you're supposed to constantly grow. Your first someone, is, someone that lives in fear isn't growing. Yep. Isn't okay. that what they say? The Stoics said life is a brutal struggle, and then you die. Right. You know, and, and it, 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 seem, it sounds, um, I guess from a standpoint, it sounds nihilistic, you know, but it's not. I mean, it's just, you can't understand true joy unless you understand that there's pain. All right. Our life is a comparison. It's a, it's a constant comparison. You can't understand, you know, light and dark. There's, there's an opposite to everything that we, are, that we witness in life. And if you don't understand those comparisons, and you get into a point where you just everything's the status quo. Nothing's going to change. You can't make more money. You can't uh, find the woman that you want to be with. You can't do any of that if you get to a place where I'm just existing. And yeah. that's what all this fear is designed to make you do. It's to make you come up to an acceptable level of existence that you don't want to be moved from. So for me, I constantly look at what, what can I do better for myself? What can I do better for my family? And I simplify my life. I don't give a crap what somebody on the east on the west coast is doing or the east coast is doing and the effect it's going to have on. Because I only can control the sphere of my work, as someone said. And by doing that, that may have a profound effect on someone else's work. And it should have. Because you know, we're we're we live in a society where every what every one person does can make a difference. Doesn't mean that it's going to, but it can make a difference. And it's mm-hmm. how much how much energy, how much vigor, and how much love and life you put into that is going to determine what the outcome is. Mm-hmm. I love it, Wraith. Those are fantastic words of wisdom. Now. Uh, I got to put up the swear jar for me because I do have some techniques that I like to use. And of course, race is, has an excellent uh, philosophy of life. And, you know, the red pill, the red pill offers some interesting way of thinking about things. We like to find tools that exist in reality and leverage those tools to our advantage, making ourselves our own mental point of origin. So when you've got all this fear bombarding you, being an example by living the dream is an important aspect of being able to handle this stuff and knowing the secret to living the dream is too. And here's that philosophy, living the dream. How is that possible? It's because you realize that nightmares are dreams too. And nightmares don't last. It's also not having or having control over the fucks that you're going to give. So I know that sounds harsh. It sounds crass, but, When it comes to this fear stuff and it comes to you getting sucked into it, remember, there is no firewall to your eyes and your ears and the people that are around you socially. It's going to impact you 
if everybody around you is depressed. We cannot control that, but we can understand reality around us, objective reality, by paying attention and becoming educated. Don't be afraid to look at something you're completely opposed against, especially if you've created the tools to recognize reality and use science to get through it. Get back to first principles. What does physics actually say about this shit they're telling me when it comes to environmental impact? What do the laws of thermodynamics say when it comes to you know, all of these taxes I have to pay because what? Uh, the asteroid's going to hit? Yeah, no. I mean, you have to be you have to be cognizant that these people want your money at every level. Even the people that are pitting men and women against each other. And ultimately, that seems to be the bottom line is there's many, many bad guys around us. And if you just look at what I think, you know, it, I'm just paraphrasing, of course. But if you if you buy my stuff, if you look at my stuff, if you vote for me, I can save you. I am the savior. That's not true. Nobody is here to save us. Only we are here to save each other. And uh, if you're living the dream, tell somebody else the secret to live in the dream. That's what changes things. And that's what bolsters us against living in fear and uh, opens our eyes to opportunities that are out there for us. Hey, I want to thank a lot of the chat members. We've had a ton of them in here today. You know, uh, Pearl's, Pearl has a technique. She just reminds herself to get to talk for a living. And that's a great life. Pearl, I've seen you. I've met you. You're having a great life, and I, I admire it. That's fantastic. Uh, you've done well for yourself. There's a whole lot going on. Um, you know, I know everybody believes this election is super, super important, and that's fine. But I will tell you this. Life will go on no matter what. Opportunities will be taken. Opportunities will be given regardless of the outcome. Could it get ugly? Life always is going to get ugly. It's just how exposed are you to this? Uh, and I would say go into it with some positivity. That's really what the dragon ship is all about is prepare for the worst, but realize that the best is coming too. And when some doors close, others open. There's always a silver lining. Always. It really doesn't matter as down as you get as much far down as this feels, even if you're physically hurt, there's always some reward. There's always an opportunity if you're just willing to have the balls to seize it and, you know, don't give so many fucks. That's really kind of my technique on this. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the tools that I have gathered after many, many years in the red pill space. So guys, it's been a fantastic show. Once again, uh, chat, what an awesome chat today. Damian Orowski, um, Fastback GT, Unrealized Thoughts, all of our regulars, Stephen Bradley Jones. Guys, Pearl, thank you. You know, this whole channel, my channel, the channels that are shared here, we really need your super chats to keep going. We do have expenses. And if you like any of this content, we would appreciate any super chats you can give. Or, you know, just be a patron and, uh, you know, support our books Support AJ, go over there and subscribe to his channel. That's uh, AJ, Detail Viking, you know. Uh, support Mike Steele, he's coming up. And Nuke, Nuke has an awesome, awesome channel. He talks about RP things, and uh, his perspective out there in Dallas is pretty amazing. Easy going sort of guy, uh, has a lot of fun with this stuff. Go and listen to him and Jack over there on Post Zero. Uh, we sure enjoy having this entire group. And, of course, Viking Dad Wisdom with his really sharp sword of wit on the F. destroyer opportunity <laughs> destroyer yeah, opportunity. Of opportunity. Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we do have a super chat and we're going to shout them out and we will see if we can get a nice thunderclap we appreciate that as i swing my hammer super supernatural fart spreader which we appreciate the name has left us a canadian five dollars just my tip for good RP content and getting my uh, YTB account name on the screen to offend the soy people who don't like seeing the word fart. Keep it up, Thor. No worries. <laughs> should, maybe we should call it like uh, 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 undigested, uh, expelled um, fecal uh, gas matter or something like that. Maybe that would be better. Who knows? <laughs> And we got another one, man. Uh, let's go ahead and give another thunder to 
arm details. Hey, I know that guy. You don't have to do that. Hey, I know that, that guy. <laughs> hey, man. You don't have to do that. You are one of the Dracars. We need to get. I know, I know, I know. I just, I just need to do share the love, man. <laughs> share the love. <laughs> no worries, man. Christianity Unplugged. Skull, my friend. I appreciate the support. And we appreciate you too. A Thor, if I may, sir, I'd like to actually end today on a white pill. Okay, let's. Uh, do you want to do the closing notes, or or do the last call out, or do you want to you want to just go go for something right now? I just wanted to contribute one final thought before we close. Okay. Out. The. Well, I mean, we're right about in the spot. Do you want to go first, then? Uh, yes, sir. Please. We'll go around the horn now, and uh, Mike Steele from Vegas. The it's way all about I'm, you. Thank you, sir. The way I'm looking at this is this is actually also an opportunity. Because when 99.9% .9 of everyone around you is running around like chickens with their head cut off in fear. And if you are not afraid and you can stand there like a rock and be a source of steadiness for those around you, that can actually provide not only the chance to speak to these people because they're they're going to eventually ask you. Like, aren't you, aren't you worried about so-and-so winning the election? No. Well, how can, how can you not be scared? Like, what? but they're going to do this, and they're going to do that, and this, that, and the other thing. No. And they're going to be like, what the heck? Like, nothing shakes this dude. What the heck is going on? I want to see what this dude's all about. So that can give you an opportunity to speak to someone, and maybe you can take a little bit of that fear out of their life. And... Um, and it can also provide opportunities for you. And uh, holy crap, yeah, we will have to address this super chat. Uh, thanks for interrupting me, Pearl. Nah, I will accept damn. that interruption. Let's give me a... <laughs> Pearl, thank you, dear. I appreciate that. Uh, I see you're doing a new panel show yourself. I look forward to chatting with you in person. I like I like what you're doing with that. I saw Cappy on there. I got to give you the double war, or war horns for this one. A hundred pounds. What a great panel. Thank Dude, you. That's $127. That's Thank pretty you, fantastic. Much, much appreciated, dear. Here we go. Shout out, Pearl. And uh, we, we wish have, you great uh, luck with your Audacity Network. Uh, also, shout out to Elena's Bar Fitness. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Mike, uh, can, we, we get a, can we get a shame these horse from from Elena? <laughs> can, uh, what oh, do sorry, you want? Mike, go ahead, Mike. Sorry, uh, we, 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 shame these horse from Elena. We, we got to do, do it, Elena. Sure, we can do it. <laughs> yeah. Do it, do it, do it. Hang on, I got it. There's Elena here. Uh, shoot, I have it here. Hang on. Well, maybe not. Thought I did. Okay. Got, I, I, everything got messed up on my darn stream deck. So. God damn, Glenn. Oh, no. Shame these horse. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Paul, Paul, these Paul does it very well. Paul does it very well. <laughs> yeah. Shame these horse. <laughs> That's always funny. Uh, we really appreciate that. No uh, doubt about we, it. We need to get a uh, a sound drop for uh, whenever the ladies drop a super chat, like some kind of like Valkyrie war cry or something how about this one okay with my sexy voice <laughs> actually you know bro you're watching too so um later in the year i'll be doing a new panel show but actually it's going to start off as a one-on-one -on -one show and i have the format written right now and it's going to be called shield maidens and i have some gals lined up elena yes you are invited I'm going to have some one-on-one -on -one chats with some of the gals that are around this space uh, to chat about some of the topics and the experiences in their life. So uh, I'll be reaching out to you as well and uh, see if we can't get that up and running by summer. Uh, so look for RP Thor and the Shield Maidens. All right, Mike, back to you, buddy. I'm, I was coincidentally all done. So <laughs> no worries, no worries. All right. So with that, let's uh, get final thoughts from uh, Viking Dad, who, by the way, thanks for being a Drakkar. Appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of you in the future. 
Well, thanks for having me, guys. Um, I don't really have much to say. I mean, I think I just said it all during the uh, the thing earlier, but thanks for watching. And uh, you can find me on mostly on X, Twitter. Most of the time I'm on there. Um, I do have YouTube and do have Instagram. Uh, so you can find me on there, too. But most of the time I'm going to be talking crap on uh, on X. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a bad Hell ass yeah. on right now. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe one of these days after a little bit of hosting, we got some stuff ready to go for a couple of our hosts when they have enough shows under there. Heck yeah. You'll recognize some of this stuff, huh? So as you get there, guys, I'm just going to tease you. No, Paul oh, just got one oh, sent out. Nice. You're, you're and telling now? me too much because it's about to, after next month, it's about to get warm again. So it'll yep. be a good riding weather for me up here. Exactly. Here. Exactly. So as we get up there, you've been hosting for a minute. We'll definitely want to take care of you. So uh, let's go ahead and have Newt go, then Wraith, and then uh, Arm. All right. Uh, final on? thoughts. Yeah. Uh, so final thoughts. Like I said, um, world's been ending. I'm going to leave you guys with a quote. Um, they say that the world has been ending um, for many, many times now. The world has already ended for me many times and began again in the morning, right? Um, that's all. That's all I'm going to say. Um, you guys can follow me on, uh, Twitter, Galileo nuclear. Um, and I left my link tree in the chat. Um, and thanks guys for having me. Thanks, Nuke. What a pleasure, man. Hopefully we'll get you. We're going to get you to host one of these days. Cause your topics are always fucking great. So yeah, uh, I'll we'll come you doing some more. Well, I got a good one for you. I got a good one for you. Good. I can't wait, man. Uh, and my my dearest friend, Wraith Dean Tor, what are your final thoughts on this subject? Yeah, I mean, you can't live in fear. Life's, uh, uh, you know, nature and life is cyclic. It's going to come and go. It's going to change. There's ebb and flows of life. And, you know, the best thing you can do is uh, live life on your terms to the fullest possible extent. Um, if you want to, you know, contact me, it's Wraith Detour, Wraith underscore Detour on Yahoo, Facebook, Telegram, and X, in all, on all those areas. I don't post a lot, but I will answer if you, if you contact me. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Viking Detailer, what are your final thoughts here? What do you got? Do you got something coming up here too, right? Yeah, uh, tomorrow night after the... Uh wild card game for Dallas versus Green Bay. Uh, go Pack Go. I'm doing a review of uh, Paul's book. So it's going to be probably a two-hour live stream. I'm actually typing my handwritten notes into uh, show notes right now. Uh, but the other thing I was going to say is uh, to quote a very popular video game series, just like with everything going on right now, war war never changes. The politics, politics aren't going to change. So just uh, that's a little bit of my cynical, skeptical side where it's just like <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. Take care of yourself first. Take care of your friends, family next. After that, you really can't control anything. Um, you can find me on Instagram at AJMK6R20 or on YouTube, Arms Detail. I do have uh, my ex account, which is going to be uh, AR Matthews33. Um, right there, it is election year. I am, like I said earlier, a libertarian. I'm going to shit post on both parties because I can't stand either one, to be <laughs> honest with you guys. So uh, th that's why I like election years. I get to shit post all day long and piss everybody off. But other than that, I got nothing. Thank you again, Thor, for having me. Thank you, brother. We appreciate that. And we look forward to your next hosted show as well. Gentlemen, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. And I will tell you this. Um, the Stoics had it right. Memento mori. Remember death. And that's the final say, such as Nuke had. You don't have to worry about this stuff, really. Uh, one of your best bolsters against it is to have a strong brotherhood or sisterhood if you're the gals, having strong friends and family that um, think similarly to you is a great way to blow this steam off because everybody needs to vent sometimes. Uh, believe it or not, the Dragon Ship gets venting. We do venting on the Dragon's membership. All of the panel members you see here are Drakars in the Dragon's membership. And it is available to all of you to subscribe if you guys want to join the Dragon's membership. These guys are all available to chat with. And we talk about these and many, many more topics uh, on the Dragons membership. So you can always look there. Also, if you guys want to uh, uh, use some of the tools we talked about as far as 
uh, dealing with things in life, check out my book, A Dominant Masculine Presence. Guys, in the description is a link to a free chapter. And in the free chapter, it is audio. It is about the seven skills of a dominant masculine presence. Those skills will take you very far in combating any fears that you might have. Uh, I'm going to take you out today, guys. Thank you so much. See you next time on The Dragon Ship. Masculinity is in crisis. What are we to do? We need to acquire a dominant masculine presence. Now available on Amazon. Masculinity is in crisis. Men's masculine behaviors and traits have been suppressed by popular culture. Why has it become so popular to shame, guilt, insult, masculinity, and masculine behaviors? After 50 to 70 years of this has resulted in a very large subset of men who have become weak, useless, and crisis. Pathetic state for boys and men that leads to depression and violent despair. A dominant masculine presence addresses this very dilemma for the individual man and it firmly establishes why this is what is desperately needed by the individual man today. In this book, clearly defined masculine traits and behaviors and the emotional durability provided by traditional masculinity are presented as a guide to what every man should embed into his identity. Putting these principles and behaviors into practice will motivate and direct your path step to step to create for yourself an authentic dominant masculine presence.